Hey everyone, visual notes, also known as scribing, live drawing, or graphic recording, these are powerful tools for helping people better understand a complex subject. And teachers especially can use visual notes to enhance their students' understanding of a topic, whether it's science, art, history, math, English. I'm Tanya Gadsby and I'm a graphic facilitator. I've been drawing live in conferences since 2010, and I'm gonna share with you some of my top tips for visual note-taking. And to do that, we're gonna be using the One by Wacom and the Wacom One. Let's get to it. The One by Wacom is a tablet that you write on while you look at your laptop screen. It's connected by a USB cable to your computer and works on both Mac and PC. It's an affordable, simple option if you're just wanting to try visual note-taking. However, it's a bit of a learning curve when you are drawing and looking at the screen and not at your pen. The Wacom One is a display tablet. It connects directly into your computer and acts like a second screen. So you still have access to all your files and programs on your PC directly on the tablet. Although it's not as affordable as the one by Wacom, the Wacom One feels very natural when you're drawing or writing directly on the screen. One by Wacom and the Wacom One both work with Mac, PC, and Chromebook. We can use visual notes in almost any classroom setting, such as explaining a topic or when students are sharing ideas, insights, or presenting pretty much any time you want to enhance learning. And there are a few basic building blocks of visual notes. Layouts are core to visual notes. Other components include text, banners and boxes, dividers, bullets, images, and colors. You'll be a visual note-taking superhero if you have a basic understanding of these. Your layout is how you organize the content and the path that you want the viewer to follow. There are many ways of laying out your visual notes, but these are five basic ones. Columns, where you split the page into three and start drawing left to right. A pathway, where you snake around the page. You might use a big arrow to guide the reader. A hub and spoke layout. Your main topic is the hub in the middle and subtopics radiate out. In this case, we might have a diagram of an animal cell as the hub and each component as a spoke. Boxes. Like a comic book, you might want to work with boxes as your main layout. And finally, a popcorn layout is more open to putting content anywhere on the page. A good rule of thumb is to generally have your title at the top of the page. It's best to keep your text organized by main idea, sub idea, and supporting text. Your main idea is the big topic you're covering and it might have multiple sub ideas. Same for the supporting text. An example might be dog breeds as our main idea. A retriever could be a sub idea since it's one type of breed and the characteristics of a retriever can be listed underneath. A different sub-idea might be a basset hound. And these are some characteristics. Banners and boxes are containers for your content. They really help split up a lot of text and help the eye navigate the page. They also don't have to be banners and boxes. They could be an image like a car. On our example here, we might add a big banner to the title so it stands out more and banners to the subtitles. You can see we've put each feature of the glacial valley into a separate box. Finally, let's add a few bullet points so our text isn't just floating there. Dividers are great for separating content. These can be any style of line or shape that you can think of. It's a great way to section off content that you've captured to help differentiate it. Bullets are another type of divider because they help anchor each piece of text you've written in a list. 
These are a few simple ones, but bullets can be whatever you think up. We could go down a rabbit hole on color theory, but a good principle to keep in mind is dark colors are best for text and light colors are best for background content that you don't want to compete with your text. I should add that lighter colors are also great for arrows, shapes, and dividers. Finally, images. Sometimes people think that they need to be an artist to take visual notes, but this is not true. I've seen excellent visual notes that are mostly text or just arrows and stick figures. It's helpful to practice drawing a few simple icons you might want to use over and over, such as a piece of paper for a big list, a light bulb for ideas, or if you're a math teacher, maybe having a decent set of 3D shapes or triangles would be helpful. You also don't need to draw these things live. You can save your icons as individual images and simply insert them into your visual notes whenever you need them. For online classes, you can share your visual notes just through screen share in Microsoft Teams or Zoom. And in the classroom, you can share visual notes to a smart board or a projector. This is great if you don't want to be on your feet all day at the front of the class. Some people find working on the smaller screen is easier and quicker than writing on a large smart board. So I hope that was a helpful overview of visual note taking and that you're inspired to use it in your teaching practice, whether you're working with elementary, high school, or post-secondary school students. This helpful cheat sheet has an overview of everything we talked about. Find it at the link below uh, for printing or future reference. And keep in mind that you don't have to be an artist to draw or take effective visual notes. Happy drawing!